Howdy guys, what's up? My name is Sarah and I'm going to teach you guys about Photoshop CS5. Uh, today we're going to learn about layers and filters. So I'm going to start off real quick with layers. Uh, one thing I like to do is have everything on a separate layer so that way I can edit it and move it just as easy as I want. So uh, if you hold down the control button and just drag, you can move around your, your layer and it is independent of the background so oh and the checkerboard means that it's transparent doesn't mean that Photoshop thinks you want a checkerboard on everything it just means it's transparent so we turn the background back on um, also note the background is locked it's locked into place so you aren't able to move it around you can take off the locks but it's it's just not worth it no one wants to deal with the background layer so start with the sketch on a new layer uh, layer 2 is going to be my uh, just like flat colors so those are locked now just because I wanted to change around the way that I did it. So anyway, uh, Control U will bring up your hue and saturation menu. So that allows you to change the color of your entire layer without selecting anything. So it's real fast or really easy to turn it into a lemon in case I wanted that instead of a lime. Like, oh man, I messed up. I wanted lime or <laughs> a lemon instead of a lime. What was I thinking? Well, with that button, you can just change it back real fast. So the most important thing I'm going to teach you, though, is this multiply filter. Now, you'd see that and be like, oh, well, she knows a lot about color. No, that's a lie. I do not know anything about color. Uh, it actually looked like this when I originally did it. So, the original layer looks like this. It's just a tonal shading layer. And the magic of Multiply lets you have your white turn into transparent and your black turn into opaque. And any of the colors that are in between that range will give you a translucent effect. So you can see when I put it back on the uh, green that it'll turn into shading again. And this is a way to combat the uh, eternal problem of having a bad kind of shadow cast. So you're always told not to shade with black because it looks dull, it looks unrealistic, and just bad. I, I've just been always told that, so I, I try to use Multiply to kind of counter that. Um, if I wanted to put it in a warmer, kind of shaded room, I could change it to yellow, uh, change the original Multiply filter to yellow, and it looks like I uh, had originally colored it that way. So you can maintain your strokes, so in case you made like a gorgeous stroke on that layer, you can keep it and just change the color of it. So that's a really, really nice thing you can do. It's so editable as long as you build it the right way. Um, the opposite and equally important layer is screen. And that's going to give you this um, black being transparent and white being opaque. And so that's the original layer. And then turn it back to screen, it'll give you a highlight. And so that's pretty much the two important things I've come up with for needing to know about shading and highlighting your image based on uh, layer calculations. And of course you can drag and drop these anywhere you want on the layer spectrum. Uh, it's really nice to do in case you... Uh, one important thing that I like to do is I like to be sloppy on one layer but precise on another so you don't have to be precise on all your layers. Uh, it's really handy to do. I'll show you in another uh, tutorial but as of current I'll just move right on to filters. Um, there's a program called Apophysis, and basically it lets you put in numbers and you get out fractal images. Uh, it's a lot more complicated than that, but as of current, that's all you need to know about it. It's a freeware, so it's a little bit grainy when you output your, uh, I guess, picture. So what I'm going to do is, oh, and also the contrast isn't exactly what I want. So Control J is going to bring up a duplicate layer, and that's probably the most important thing I'm going to teach you today about uh, photo manipulation, is to always duplicate your original. Uh, like I said, you don't really want to mess with the background because you can't move it, so it's best to start on a new layer. Um, also, if you don't like how it turned out, you can always revert back to the original without closing out of the program. It, uh, not program, but the picture and uh, oh also save save often and keep saving it's just control s you don't even have to go up to the file menu anymore you can just hit control s and it will save it for you also don't save while you're closing out of the program that will corrupt your file and that is something you can't recover i don't care how many virus programs you want to download that say they can recover your file <laughs> they usually will not be able to do that uh, moving right along 
I'll t teach you guys about uh, changing the contrast. Uh, you can go into your control L menu, which is levels, and change your gamma. And the gamma is the midtone, and that's that gray little arrow that I just moved. Uh, that'll change your midtone to darker. Uh, depending on which way you move it, you can change the uh, less that or less contrast or more contrast. Um, it hasn't exactly fixed the grainy problem, but it has fixed the contrast problem. So what we're going to do for the graininess problem is put on a blur and put on a Gaussian blur. Um, it'll let you preview it. If you have a slow computer, I suggest turning off the preview so you only have to see the thumbnail. Uh, because my computer is doing okay, I'll just leave it on so you can see it. Uh, this is going to be way too blurry. You're not going to be able to tell. It's not going to be defined at all. And this is going to be blurry enough because you can still see those uh, pixels. So we're going to leave it at 2.2 because that seems to be working and I don't want to test it. <laughs> so we're going to leave it at 2.2. It's kind of blurry, but then again we go back to the idea of backing things off um, and then reverting back to the original, which is another important thing I've learned about photo manipulation. You can always uh, make something exaggerated and then back it off. Uh, we're going to reuse that multiply filter again and then get a uh, darkness we want while maintaining the blur that we'd like to have and also keeping it at a low opacity so you can still see the definition. So that's just basic editing, I guess. Um, just a basic kind of edit. You can s use that on pictures if you have a poor camera quality and you have a lot of pixels or have a lot of noise. Uh, that's probably the easiest way to get rid of noise is to make a duplicate layer, layer blur it, and then overlay it with a uh, lower opacity. Uh, this is essentially what I did with the rest of the picture. It's a little bit dark now that I look at it again, but at the time that's what I wanted. Um, that's just a, an overlay filter put on it and also a, another Gaussian blur. So again, the possibilities are endless with Photoshop and it's so easy to edit, there's no excuse not to. Uh, this is a picture that has a sharpen filter on it. I'll go up and show you the sharpen filter. I won't use it again because it doesn't really need it. Um, all of these pretty much uh, are self-explanatory. Anything that has a dot 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 next to it is going to bring you into an extra console. So just be aware of that. Um, pretty much I don't really use sharpen unless it's to get a grainy kind of texture or you know just to get like a sand kind of I guess thing. I mean I really don't use it too much so if you can think of a use for it, go for it. But as of current I'm probably not going to talk too much about it. If you know that you need it then try it out. It basically increases the definition between two pixels so <laughs> I, I really don't know what to tell you for that one. Uh, this is what an overlay filter looks like. Um, that's what the normal I guess thing looks like. Um, I'll turn this back up to 100% opacity so you can see it. Overlay is going to be a mix of um, your dodge, and I'm not going to be talking about dodge yet, that is a different monster to tame, uh, and it's going to be a multiply, all combined into one. Uh, I don't exactly know how the algorithm works, I won't even pretend to, but I know the effect that it usually gives off. So uh, back that off a little bit so it looks less, I guess, tacky. And so that looks a lot more contrasty and a lot richer colors in there. And the last thing I'm going to teach you before I go is a fun filter. I'm going to probably do this on every episode. A uh, fun filter that really doesn't do a ton, but it's a whole lot of fun to use. So we're going to make a tonal image, and you can tell I spent a lot of time on this tonal image. Uh, it's it's probably my best work, so <laughs> just, just for you guys. So I'm going to go over to here and uh, go to Pixelate and Color Halftone. Now this is going to give you like a comic book effect and it's going to use the white and the black for a basis and use a different type of pixelated gradation for the middle. So if you wanted to just play around in Photoshop, make make a fun picture. Um, oh, these I all set them to I set them all to zero because I don't necessarily want any transparent uh, dots going in any weird directions. So just keep it as normal. Uh, this is the way to get the sharp kind of classic halftone that you probably want. So, we got the halftone in there. Um, since the picture's at 66%, it's going to look kind of weird. Uh, this is 100%, you can see the dots, you can see it fade to white, you can see it fade, fade to black. Um, it's just a fun filter to use if you're, you know, got a picture of your friends, you want to spice it up. Put 
some half tone in it. It'll definitely fix it right up. So I'll try to do that every episode. Have a fun filter at the end. Uh, hope you learned something, and I uh, hope that you guys have good luck in Photoshop. Again, I've been using it for eight years, so hopefully I can teach you a little bit about it. But um, basically, it's going to be a lot of trial and error. So the the best way to learn is through practice and practice, practice, practice. So good luck with that, and please subscribe to my channel. I will be making more of these based on your comments. Tell me what to do. I will. Prob I will do my best to teach you guys <laughs> about anything you want to know. Also, please like the video and uh, comment on it. Please, please, please. And uh, good luck in Photoshop. Remember to save early and often and to duplicate layers. Have a nice day.